we thank you because this is a glorious day this is a good day the day that you have made will be glad and rejoice in it and lord i pray you pour down the spirit of faith in jesus name and we pray that great will be the outpouring of your blessing upon your people even today confirm it O oh lord in every life in jesus name we pray God bless you. You can be seated. We're looking at 2 Corinthians chapter 4. In 2 Corinthians chapter 4, you'll find exactly these words. The spirit of faith. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 13. We, having the same spirit of faith, according as it is written, I believed and therefore have I spoken. We also believe. And therefore speak. As we look at this verse of scripture, it talks about the spirit of faith. It says in verse 13, we having, we having the same spirit of faith. That means it's not just that we had each in the past, or we're going to have each in the future. It says at this very moment, why are we confident that our problems are going to be solved? Because at this very moment, we have the spirit of faith. Why are we so sad and so sure that whatever the mountain may be, that those mountains are going to be removed because we have in the same spirit of faith. How can we be so confident in the midst of all the turbulence and the storms of life that we're going to be victorious because we have in the same spirit of faith. Then it says, according as it is written according as it is written you see if you are manifesting the spirit of faith you have to live and work and move and talk and act in the spirit of faith according to what has been written it is what has been written in the past written in the word of god the great testimonies of scripture that shows the glory of god the power of god the might of god the possibilities that we're having god when you read all those things and you believe them and you confess them and you act on them we having the spirit of faith the same spirit of faith according as it is written i believed therefore have i spoken and then it says we also we also believe and therefore we speak in psalm 116 psalm 116 verses 9 and 10 I will walk before the Lord in the land of the living. I will walk before the Lord in the land of the living. Why did he say that? He was going through some real, real problems. Look at verse 3. The sorrows of death compass me. But I'm not going to talk about that. Having the spirit of faith means that you're not looking at things surrounding you. You are not looking at things that are threatening you. It says in verse 3, The sorrows of death compass me. The pains of hell got hold upon me. I found trouble and sorrow. You'll think that a man like that was about to die. Yes, in the natural. Looking at what people will think and looking at how people will act and looking at how people will normally behave at such a time when sickness and sorrow and pain and trouble, when they all surround such a man, you'll think that he'll pack up and go home and say goodbye, good night. There's no more hope for me. But he says in verse 9, I will Walk before the Lord in the land of the living. I believe, therefore, have I spoken, I was greatly afflicted. I was, I was, I was greatly afflicted. But now, because of the spirit of faith and because of my confession in this spirit of faith, I cannot declare that I am going to walk before the Lord in the land of the living. It's like calling those things would be not as though they were. When you have the spirit of faith, you do not look at the conditions prevailing to present you do not look at the things that are biting hard on your life biting hard on your family biting hard on your finances biting hard on your profession you're looking at the reaching word of god according us according as it has been reaching let's look at romans chapter 4 in romans chapter 4 reading from verse 18 romans chapter 4 reading from verse 18 
who against hope believed in hope. When somebody is walking and operating and acting according to the spirit of faith, it's going to be walking in hope. It's hopeful. When other people are hopeless, because he has faith in God, and because he's walking by the spirit of faith, and because he lives his life by the spirit of faith, hopeless situations make him whole. Because it says, who against hope, believed in hope, that he might become the father of many nations according to that which was spoken, so shall thy seed be, and be not weak in faith. A person that has a spirit of faith will have an attitude of faith, the mind of faith, the confession of faith, the word of faith. He will not be weak in faith, being not weak in faith. He considered not his own body, now dead, that's how to walk by faith, that's how to live by faith, that you do not consider things natural, things physical. Things visible, things prevalent and present, that it, is, it doesn't come into consideration at all, the things that people see and the things that you feel within you because faith takes over your feeling and faith supersedes and it's superimposed on your feeling and therefore you are not walking about by what you see. Or by what you feel. It says, be not weak in faith. He considered not a son body now dead. When he was about a hundred years old, neither yet the deadness of Sarah's womb. He staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief. He staggered not. You know what it means to stagger? And you know we know that drunkards stagger. That is when wine overcomes them. They're not in control of themselves anymore. They're not in control of their life anymore. And you see, unbelief makes people stagger. They're not in control of their lives anymore. They give up. And they just stagger through life. And they think this will not work. That will not work. The family is breaking down. Business is breaking down. Life is breaking They stagger because of unbelief. And they're not in control of their movement. They're not in control of their plans. They're not in control of their life. They're not in control of their decisions anymore because they stagger through unbelief. And they're not stable. And they're not steady. And they cannot move on steadily because of this unbelief. But they staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief. But he was strong in faith, giving glory to God and being fully persuaded. That what he had promised, he was able also to perform. Persuaded. That's how to live and that's how to walk. That's how to move by the spirit of faith. You're fully persuaded beyond a shadow of doubt. That what the Lord has promised, he is able also to perform. And he will perform it in your life. And you will be glad and happy for this day because the Lord is going to honor the spirit of faith and the confession of faith in your heart. I divide the message to three parts. Number one, having the spirit of faith. Number one, having the spirit of faith. Having the spirit of faith. Number two, hindrances to the spirit of faith. What are the things that hinder? The oppression and the manifestation of the spirit of faith. Hindrances to the spirit of faith. Number three, holding on in the spirit of faith. Whatever comes, whatever betides, whatever rages, whatever storms there, whatever you see, whatever you feel, holding on in the spirit of faith. Number one, having the spirit of of faith let's come back to this uh, same verse it's in second corinthians chapter 4 verse 13 and we having the same spirit of faith uh, when you say you have the same what are you talking about if you told me uh, i have the same car you're making comparison with another person you're saying, I have the same car as so and so. I earn the same salary. 
What are you talking about? You're talking about a comparison with another person. I earn the same salary as such and such. I'm working in the same place. What do you mean? I'm working in the same place as so and so. Whenever you say something like this, we having the same spirit of faith. You're making comparison with some other people who had faith, who manifested faith, and who lived their lives, and they lived their lives by faith. And so, who are you making comparison with then? And you need to understand this. That if you have the same faith as these people we're talking about, then you'll be able to achieve, then you'll be able to receive the same thing they achieved and the same thing they received. We have in the same spirit of faith, according as it is written, I believed, and therefore have I spoken. We also, when you, say, when you use the word also, also, that means you're still making comparison. I believe that's what they said. And because we have the same spirit of faith, I also believe and therefore speak. Now, who are these people that they are making comparison with? Let's turn to Numbers chapter 14. We have in, we have in the same spirit of faith. The same spirit of faith. In Numbers chapter 13, I'm reading verse 30. Numbers chapter 13 verse 30 and Caleb stilled the people before Moses and said let us go up at once and possess it for we are well able to overcome it that man was having faith he had another spirit within him another spirit within him uh, let's, before I come back to that let's look at uh, Numbers chapter 14 verse 24 chapter 14 Verse 24, but my servant Caleb, because he had another spirit with him. My servant Caleb, because he had another spirit with him. What kind of spirit? Spirit of faith. What other spirit do the other people have? They had the spirit of unbelief. When, because of the unbelief, they said, we are not able. We cannot do it. It's impossible. It cannot be done. There's no way we can go into that land and overcome. But Caleb had another spirit, different, opposite to the spirit of unbelief. He says, yes, let's go up at once. No delay. A man that has a spirit of faith does not delay. Your miracle will not be delayed. The overflowing of the power of God into your life will not be delayed. And the answer to your prayer will not be delayed. Let us go up at once. For we are well able to overcome each. He believed in his heart. He spoke with his mouth. I believe. Therefore, I spoke. And we also believe. And therefore, we speak. You see, you cannot have the spirit of faith and keep quiet. You cannot have the spirit of faith and just fold your hand. You cannot have the spirit of faith and be immobilized. That you are paralyzed, you are immobilized, and your problems tie you down and you cannot move. No, no, that will be a spirit of unbelief. But when you have the spirit of faith, you'll be able to say like Caleb, let us go up at once because we are well able to overcome each. That's another spirit, the spirit of faith. And it says, we too today, after so many years have passed, that spirit of faith has not changed. And the oppression and the action and the demonstration of the spirit of faith has not changed. That whatever the other people did in generations past, by that same spirit of faith, today, that same spirit of faith will do the same wonders. We we'll have the same inheritance, and we get to the same place, and we'll be able to get into the land of promise where we have, where we inherit all the promises of God for us, because we have another spirit. I have the spirit of faith. I have the spirit of faith. And therefore, mountains are going to move before me. And therefore, problems are going to...
Champion in the world. Champions among the Gentiles. Whatever champions they are, you must remember that Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, he conquered the champion of evil, Satan. He conquered him on the cross of Calvary. And right now, because Jesus conquered that champion of evil, he has conquered for you. He conquered on your behalf. And now you can have the spirit of faith in you. And you having the spirit of faith, you'll be able to confess, you'll be able to speak out. Because Jesus overcame. I will overcome in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And then in verse 45, in 1 Samuel chapter 17, verse 45. Then said David to the Philistine. Now he spoke to the Philistine. You must speak to your mountain. You must speak to the problem. You must speak to that champion in the spirit world that is a kind of hindering your progress, hindering your family. Speak to that champion and stand on this word that you confess, that you speak out. And when you speak in your heart, then you are able to understand the power of the word of a man of faith. And of course, you're speaking every time. That's what is called self-talk. Self-talk. But you see, many times, the self-talk is like, you know, it's like spirit of unbelief. Look at this problem I have. Look at what I've been going through. I'm taking a review of my life. What have I achieved? Where have I been? Since I've been young, now I'm getting older. There's nothing to write home about. Uh-uh. You are not talking to the champion. And you are not dislodging the powers of evil. You are taking in more witness to yourself. And you are not spirit by this. You are not speaking by the spirit of faith. And you see now, I'm, I'm, I'm confronted with another problem. My relative, my husband is sick. Uh-huh. What do you want to say now? Speak to the champion, not speak to yourself. David was not speaking to himself. He spoke to Saul. And he spoke about the champion. He said, I'll take him on. Even though he's a champion, I'll conquer him. Speak to the mountain. Speak to the force of evil that is trying to hinder your way. Don't speak to yourself. Those discouraging words. My husband is sick now. At my age, I'm not even up to 50 years, and then I'm going to become a widow. Don't talk like that. Have the spirit of faith and speak, speak, speak to this champion. You know, all this kind of self talk, what kind of thing is this? I left the other place of work, I come to this place of work now. And it's like the poverty that is following me. It's why did I even leave the other place? I could even manage the salary there. These people that promised me that they were going to double my salary, now they have said there is no money. 